Hi, I'm Muhammad, and I'm going to present game theory. All right, so let's get started. What is basically game theory? We can explain game theory in more than one way. Uh, but basically, game theory is a process of modeling the strategic interaction between two or more players in a situation containing set rules and uh, their respective outcomes. In game theory, the outcome of uh, some person's decision is not only affected by the person himself, but also by uh, also by the choices made by other participants. Game theoretic ideas can uh, range from as simple as uh, kicking, uh, like choosing how to target a penalty kick and uh, choosing how to defend against it, to some complex ideas such as uh, deciding how to bid it an auction or uh, pricing a new product when other firms have the similar products. Now, what basically game theory facilitates us? So, it's like thinking about the strategic consequences of your own actions where you need to consider the effect of decision by others. It's precisely the kind of uh, reasoning that game theory is designed to facilitate. Well, we would understand it more and more better as uh, we will proceed in our uh, proceed through the chapter. Now, in game theory, game is the key ingredient, is the basic ingredient. So to understand the game theory in depth, we need to understand game itself. So what is a game? A game is any interaction between multiple people that we call players and that is the interaction in which each person or each player's payoff is affected by a decision made by others. Now, I would also like you to note uh, two key points here, which we would be using a lot in our presentation, and that's payoff and uh, strategy. So what is a payoff? It's a value associated with the possible outcome of a game. And uh, the strategy is a kind of rule or plan of action for playing that game. This would be clear. Uh, these two terms would be clear uh, as we proceed in the presentation. All right. So let's talk about the ingredients and principles of a game. So there are six ingredients and principles of a game and the foremost is, number one is the game needs to include multiple people. We would use the term players. Uh, the game needs to include multiple players because players could be people, animal, objects, and so on. Now, there needs to be a reward in the game and uh, that reward could be win, lose, maximum, lowest, plus, minus, so on. Along with the reward, there is set of options for how to behave. The, uh, these set of options are called uh, players' strategies. Now, for each choice of strategies, a player receives a payoff that may depend on the strategies made by other players. Like we said earlier, that payoff is uh, the value associated with the possible outcome of a game. Now we assume that the players act rationally. What does that mean? It means that we know that the players who are participating in a game, they really understand the game. They know the outcome. They know, the, they know their strategies and they know the possible outcomes of uh, the decisions made by themselves. We, we, we assume that the players act rationally and they know the rules of the game and everything. We also assume 
that the players interact according to their personal self-interest. It means that uh, no matter what choices the players are given, the players will try to avail those strategies or those choices which would be perfect for them, which would be better for them in every way. Now, let's move next to understand it more. If we talk about uh, game theory in detail, there are branches, two main branches of game theory. But here in this presentation, we would be mainly concerned with non-cooperative. And uh, we would not talk about uh, another branch, which is cooperative branch. But we would be concerned with the non-cooperative, though there will be some examples of coordination game. Uh, but mainly we will uh, be concerned with the non-cooperative type of uh, ga games here. So what basically are the non-cooperative games? Well, they cover competitive social interactions where there will be some winners and some losers. And uh, it has Nash equilibrium. We would explain Nash equilibrium in this presentation later on. Now. When you are competing with others, or when you are in a competition, you need to choose what benefits you the most, no matter what everyone else decides to do. And now another point is in a competitive situation, game theory basically can tell you how to be smart. All right. Explaining the non-cooperative further, we would use an example, and that example is uh, the presentation exam example. Suppose we have two players, student A and student B, and those two students need to prepare for either exam or presentation. It's like uh, tomorrow they have an exam and uh, tomorrow they have the presentation, and uh, the rules say rules of the game say that they cannot prepare for both presentation and exam. So they need to prepare for either presentation or exam. And uh, also they cannot interact with each other. It's like player A, student A is not sure what student B is going to prepare. They have no interaction between them. They cannot interact on phone or, or anything. So now both students can prepare for one a specific task of course but they don't know what other one is preparing and both students need to maximize their rewards that is the rule of the game that they care about their own rewards they care about their own average grade so we have a scenario in in this scenario if you look at the matrix of uh, this uh, student A and student B so if both student A and student B prepare for the presentation so they would get average grade of 90 each which seems very good now if both of them prepare for the exam they would get an average grade of 88 here these 88 and 90 is a payoff actually so but when one of them prepare for the exam but other one prepare for the presentation then the payoff are different. Now we need to understand what is the optimal strategy. What strategy should they use? What strategy should be the optimal for them? So here we assume that both students uh, they care about maximizing their own average grades. As we said that it's the rule of the game that both players are concerned with their own average grade. We also assume that both players know everything about the game and uh, about the rules. Now, each player chooses a strategy to maximize her payoff, uh, given her belief about the strategy used by the other player. That's the rationality. Now, what's the optimal strategy? If you look here, the optimal strategy is study for exam. Or you can say, why? Why is the optimal strategy study for exam when there is higher payoff for if they both prepare for the presentation? Why is 
the optimal strategy saying they should prepare for exam so the answer lies there first if your partner study for exam you would get a payoff of 88 by also studying and a payoff of 86 otherwise on the other hand if your partner prepared the presentation you'll get a payoff of 90 by also preparing the presentation but 92 by by studying for exam you can understand it like this here you see uh, studying for exam is better why because uh, if you both prepare if you both prepare for exam you would get 88 average but if one of the student is preparing for the exam but the other one is preparing for the presentation the one who will be preparing for the exam would get higher payoff and the other one would get the lower payoff however we said that both players would care about their payoff so both of them would try to get the higher payoff which is by studying for the exam in both cases so the optimal strategy would be studying for the exam and uh, studying for the presentation would be unstable because both of them they want to maximize their grade both of them need uh, wants to have the higher payoff so they would be preparing for exam now we would move on with another example of non-cooperative scenario and uh, there we have an example of a prisoner's dilemma suppose there are two prisoners they were caught from the crime scene and police put them in uh, separate jails now they don't have any kind of communication with each other and they don't know what their partner criminal is going to do we call those two criminals as prisoner a and prisoner b and uh, we have the situation, we have the scenario here, the strategies they can choose. If both of them decide not to confess in the jail, they would get one year in jail. However, if it happened to be like player A, prisoner A confesses about the crime, but the prisoner B is silent and does not confess. So the prisoner B would get 10 years in jail by not confessing and prisoner A would set free, would, would get immunity for confessing. Similarly, if both of them confess for the crime, they would get on uh, four years in jail each. Now, what could be the optimal strategy here? Should they both confess or should they both not confess? If we look at here, we also have a Nash equilibrium. We discuss, we will explain it more, but just for now, what is a Nash equilibrium? Nash equilibrium basically is like a, a condition where like a player in a given game has found Nash equilibrium when they make the choice that leaves them better off, no matter what their opponents decide to do. What does that mean? That we get the Nash equilibrium when a player decides to make a choice which which set him safe which give him a safe side no matter what the other player is about to do here if you look at the optimal strategy you can see that the optimal strategy is both should confess why because if you go back if, if you go back and we see we can see that in case one of them confess and one of them does not confess so there would be a 10 years of jail for the one who will not confess and uh, there will be immunity for the one who will confess however they are prisoners they are criminals they cannot trust each other so they don't know what other what what other player is about to do and as it's about maximizing their own chances of getting the low uh, time in prison so they would be careful about making the choice so the optimal strategy here would be both of them will confess and they will spend four years because not confessing is an unstable condition in case prisoner a does not confess but prisoner b confess so prisoner a would get 10 years in jail 
And same is the situation if prisoner B does not confess, but prisoner A confess. So this is unstable condition. So optimal strategy, or we can say Nash equilibrium, is at this point. All right. Now we have kind of best responses and dominant strategies in our games. So what are the best responses and the dominant strategies so far? From the two examples, we can we can discuss this as the idea of best response is in game theory. The best response is a strategy or strategies which produces the most favorable outcome for a player, taking other players' strategies as given the formula. Now, if you look at this formula, here P1 is a player one, and the S here is a strategy chosen by a player one with respect to the strategies, with respect to the strategy chosen by a player two. Now, this should be greater than the player one, all the uh, other strategies chosen by player one with respect to uh, the strategy of player two. Now, what is this S dash and what is simply S? S is a strategy chosen by P1. That's the best response, the optimal strategy. Whereas S dash is the rest of the strategies which player one can choose. Now, what is the strictly dominant strategy? A strictly dominant strategy is a strategy that always provides greater utility to the player, no matter what other player's strategy is. The strategy earns a player a strictly high payoff than any other. And we can say that strictly dominant strategy for player one in, is a strategy that is a strict best response to every other strategy of player two. All right, so we talked about we talked about the Nash equilibrium earlier. So here we can explain what actually Nash equilibrium is. Nash equilibrium is a concept of game theory where the optimal outcome of the game is one where no player has an incentive to deviate from his chosen strategy after considering an opponent's choice. In simple words, a player in game has found a Nash equilibrium when he makes a choice that leaves him better off, no matter what opponent decides to do. We would explain Nash equilibrium with another example here, and uh, here's a three client game. We have two players here, which are farm one and farm two. And they have uh, strategies which they would be playing, which, which, which they would choose to maximize their reward. Now, there are some rules. If both F1 and F2 approaches the same client, each will get half of their client's business. F1 itself is too small to attract business on its own. So if it approaches one client while F2 decides to approach another client, then F1 would get zero payoff. If F2 approaches client B or C independently, it will get their full business. However, A being a larger client only agrees to do business if both F1 and F2 approaches together. Now, because A is a larger client, doing business with it is eight, four to each firm if, if they split, while doing business with B or C is worth two, one to each firm. Now, if you look at this matrix, you can see that there is no dominant strategy, no single dominant strategy, because they can either choose A, they can either choose B, they can either choose C. In case firm two decides to move with the B or C, they would leave the firm one with zero payoff because firm one is smaller. 
But where is the Nash equilibrium at? So we have the Nash equilibrium. The best possible, the optimal strategy here is both of them go for A. As I discussed earlier that uh, game theory has two branches, but we are mainly concerned with uh, non-cooperative in this presentation. Just for the sake of information, I would like to uh, explain a little about cooperative games. A cooperative game is a game where every player has agreed to work together towards a common goal. And just like uh, non-cooperative had the Nash equilibrium, cooperative games have shapely value. And when you are cooperating with others, you need to choose what's the fairest for everyone in game. In a cooperative situation, game theory can tell you how to be fair. And a collation is what you call a group of players in a cooperative game. But we would not discuss it further and we would get back to our main content. So what is multiple equilibria? Now we have a, another example, a coordination game. Multiple equilibria is like when there are more than one Nash equilibriums, when there is the situation where there is where there are two equilibriums or more than two equilibriums, we say multiple equilibria. So here we have a, an example where there are two players, player A and player B, and they need to make a presentation either using PowerPoint or Apple's keynote. Now, again, they cannot interact with each other via phone or any other means, but they need to prepare the presentation and uh, they need to choose by themselves which software they're gonna use. For example, if player A decide to do the presentation, half of the presentation on PowerPoint and player two decides the same software, they would get the payoff of one, one each at PowerPoint. But the situation is same if they both decide to go for the keynote. So the players have the common goal here and need to work on the same strategy. But how we would get the optimal solution here? How we would get the optimal strategy here? Because there is not one Nash equilibrium. There is no one optimal strategy here. So how we would know which one the players should choose? So here comes the idea of focal point. Idea of focal point is a solution that players tend to choose by default in the absence of communication. Now, there are many settings in which coordination games arise. For example, two manufacturing companies working together extensively need to decide whether to configure their machinery in uh, metric units or English units of measurement. Our two platoons in the same army need to decide whether to attack an enemy's uh, left flank or right flank. Two players trying to find each other in a crowded mall need to decide whether to wait at the north end of the mall or at the south end. Now here in each mentioned example and uh, scenario, either choice can be fine provided the both player make the same choice. All right, so we also have some unbalanced coordination games and uh, we have some multiple equilibriums in unbalanced coordination games. Now, what are those? For example, preparing the slides for a joint presentation project where both you prefer Keynote over PowerPoint. Like when you prefer one specific software over another, uh, one specific uh, tool to prepare the presentation. So you will have the higher payoff at that preferred tool. Now here we can predict that when the players must choose, they will select strategies to reach the equilibrium that gives them the higher payoff, of course. Now there is also a situation, there is a case when two players have their own preferences about choosing the default tool to make presentation. Two equilibria will exist here, but both players will get higher payoff with respective to their preferred tools. 
For example, if player A prefer to choose PowerPoint over Keynote, so in this situation, player A would get the higher payoff. And uh, similarly, if uh, player two decided, player B decides to have uh, the preferred uh, uh, tool as Keynote, so he would get higher payoff by using the Keynote, while lower payoff by using the PowerPoint. So we will have we will have this unbalanced uh, coordination here, and we will have the multiple equilibria here, not just one equilibrium, not just one Nash equilibrium. Now, in multiple equilibria, there is not always coordination. There is not always where we are coordinating with one another. There is also kind of anti-coordination activity. As uh, we are discussing, we are already discussing non-cooperative games. So what is an anti-coordination activity? Here we have an example, the hawk dove game. Here, hawk, basically hawk strategy defines, is explains an aggressive strategy. And the dove strategy, the dove strategy is passive strategy. Now we have some rules. According to the rules, if both of these animals, which are players, if both of these players uh, like uh, choose to either go aggressive, the hawk strategy, or passive, the dove strategy. So if the strategy is passive, both players divide food evenly. If one behaves aggressively while other passively, then aggressor gets higher payoff while other gets a low payoff. If strategy is aggressive, both players will have zero payoff. If, if, if you look at the matrix, you will understand it. Like if the strategy are the dove strategies, they would get an equal payoff. If the strategy is passive, they would get an equal payoff. However, if the strategy is one is one behaves aggressively and the other behaves passively, the one who behave aggressive would get a higher payoff. But if both both uh, have the aggressive strategy, then there would be zero payoff. Most probably they would harm each other. Now this game has two Nash equilibriums, the best, the optimal strategies, and that is at GH and HD. All right, let's move to the mixed strategies. Mixed strategy exists in a strategy game when the player does not choose one definite action, but rather chooses according to the probability distribution over his actions. There are cases where a pure strategy equilibrium does not exist. Therefore, we need to find the probability for which the player would be willing to randomize between his actions. So here we have an example of matching pennies game. It's kind of attack defense game. And it has kind of rules like if each player holds a penny and uh, simultaneously they choose whether to show heads or tails in their penny. So player one loses his penny to player two if they match. Let's suppose if both of them choose the head, so player one will lose. However, if they choose like differently, then player two will, uh, then, then player one will win and uh, player two will get nothing. It's like player one loses his penny to player two if they match and wins player two's penny if they don't match. Now, there is no pair of strategies that are the best response to each other. So that's why we call it mixed, stra mixed strategies. If you look at this uh, matrix, you would understand that there is no pair of strategies which we can call the best response to each other. We have some advanced material and uh, here we would be discussing uh, multiplayer games and dynamic games. So let's get started with the multiplayer game. What is a multiplayer game? Well, a multiplayer games, uh, game consists 
as uh, in the two player case of uh, a set of players, a set of strategies for each player and a payoff to each player for each possible outcome. Now, if a multiplayer game has n players named 1, 2, 3, up to n, then each player has a set of possible strategies and an outcome, which we call joint strategy, of the game is a choice of the strategy for that each player. Now, there is a payoff function here, and we call that function P of i for each player i that maps the outcome of the game to the numerical payoff for that i, for that player. Now for each outcome consisting of strategies s1, s2 up to sn, there is a payoff p of i associated with those strategies and to the player i. Now to the player i, s, s i is the best response by player i to the choice of strategies s1 s2 up to s1 minus and so on by until sn by all other players if we have this condition for all other possible strategies that we represent with s1 dash available to player i now, an outcome consisting of strategies here is a Nash equilibrium. If each strategy it contains is a best response to all other strategies. Moving next to the multiplayer game, we have another game which we call dynamic games. Now, what are the dynamic games? Dynamic games, or we can say sequential games, a game where later players have some knowledge about earlier actions. However, it's not necessarily perfect information, but might be little knowledge. For instance, a player may have uh, may know that uh, an earlier player did not perform one particular action. But he's not sure. He's not. Uh, he, he he does not have much knowledge of other available available actions the first player may have performed. Now we can have many examples, but uh, mainly the examples include board games and uh, card games in which players alternate turns, negoti negotiations, uh, which usually involve a sequence of uh, offers and uh, counter offers and biddings in an auction or pricing competing goods where participants must make decisions over time. We can explain it with an example. And uh, here is the example of the dynamic games, the market entry game. Consider two competing firms as uh, player one and player two. Now we have the scenario. Player two, which is firm two, is the only serious participant in a given line of business, the player two. And the player one, the player one is considering whether to enter the market or not. The first move in the game is made by player one. That move could be enter or stay out. And that move must decide whether to stay out of the market or enter it. If player 2 chooses to stay out, however, if player 2 chooses to stay out, then the game ends with player 1 getting payoff of 0 and player 2 keeping the payoff from the entire market. Alright, so this was the presentation related to uh, game theory. We had the chapter 6 of our book and uh, we discussed uh, uh, we discussed some ingredients of the game theory. Uh, we also explained uh, non-cooperative games using some examples, uh, exam presentation example, prisoner's dilemma. And then we talked about the Nash equilibrium itself. We talked about the games where there is uh, more than one Nash equilibrium, multiple equilibria. We discussed those uh, and uh, 
we gave some examples to understand coordination games and also some unbalanced coordination games as well and later we talked about the mixed games and dynamic games uh, well that's all for this uh, presentation and uh, thank you so much for your attention